Hi all, in this video I want to address an interesting question. Can an ionic salt like KF or copper nitrate, copper one nitrate, make water acidic or basic? At the surface it seems like a odd question because neither KF nor copper nitrate has protons or hydroxide ions. But we'll see that it can affect the acidity of a solution, thus changing its pH. <clears throat> Before we get into this specific question, <clears throat> uh, let us remind ourselves what the seven strong acids and eight strong bases are. Seven strong acids, eight strong bases. Oh, by the way, you know, this whole topic uh, is meant to answer the question like, label each salt as an acidic salt, basic salt, or neutral salt. But for us to do this properly, we need to remember our list. So strong bases, strong acids I mean, we can use the periodic table for a little bit of help. We have the hydrogen halides, but not HF, but HCl, HBr, HI. HCl, HBr, HI. The other four are nitric acid, HNO3, perchloric acid, HClO4, chloric acid, HClO3, sulfuric acid, H2SO4. That's all very well and good, but it would also be nice if we could give examples of weak acids. Well, we know that HF is not a strong acid, okay? and this is weak in comparison to the strong acids. Um, maybe they'll try to, you know, an exam question will try to trick you and put H. And O2. So that's nitrous acid, not nitric acid. Mm, is there anyone, anything else? Uh, let's give another polyatomic ion. Let's give <clears throat> H2CO3, carbonic acid. That's a weak acid. Okay, what about the strong bases? Eight of them. Let's use a periodic table again as a guide. It's a group 1 hydroxide and the group 2, but for group 1, it's going from lithium to cesium. And for group 2, calcium, strontium, and barium. LiOH. So I'm just looking at the periodic table. NaOH, KOH, RBOH, CSOH. That's, those are the group 1 hydroxides. The group 2, again, you're, not, you're skipping beryllium and magnesium, but definitely calcium, strontium, and barium are considered strong bases. Calcium hydroxide, strontium hydroxide, barium hydroxide. Later on, we're going to look at solubility, and in actuality, calcium hydroxide is not very soluble. It doesn't dissolve very well. When they say calcium hydroxide is a strong base, they mean of the molecules that dissolve, nearly 100% of those molecules dissociate or ionize. What about examples of weak bases? That's a little bit harder than the examples of weak acids. But we could take a hydroxide, a metal hydroxide, that's not any one of these eight. So for instance, iron, iron hydroxide, and three, iron three hydroxide. And then sometimes what people forget is that ammonia is also a base. When you mix this with water, you create hydroxide. So a base doesn't have to have hydroxide in it. it if you create hydroxide, whether by dissociating or reacting with water, then you could be considered a base. But again, these are weak bases compared to the eight strong bases. 
Okay. Now let us jump into these effects. I'm going to start out telling you about the effects of the cation on a solution. Cation. So for instance, if we look at our example, potassium is a cation, copper 1 is a cation. Okay. All right. Here are the effects. Uh, number 1, or we could call it B1. There are two effects. So cations of strong bases. Ah, that's why we need to know the strong bases, because if it's a, a lithium, sodium, etc., if it's a cation of a strong base, those give neutral solutions. Just keep in mind that uh, we are only looking at the cation. Okay, if it's just a cation its effect, the solution will still, the water will still be neutral. So what is going on here? Li, Li plus. That's the cation of a strong base, LiOH. If we react it with H2O and we force a reaction, well, it's a cation, so it's going to most likely pair up with OH minus. So you know that this can auto ionize, but also Li plus could react with water to give us LiOH plus H plus. Okay, at this point, we have H plus in the solution, so it's acidic. But because this is a strong base, it will dissociate. And it will dissociate into Li plus plus OH minus, and these two cancel each other out. Okay, that's the thinking. And our conclusion is the solution stays neutral, or water, I will just say solution is neutral. Okay. So what is B2? B2 is the cation of a weak base. So <clears throat> if the cation is not one of these metal atoms, so cation of a weak base, <clears throat> or if they result or result in, you'll see what I mean in just a second, result in a weak base, right? This is a strong base, and it dissociated. Um, okay, let's take that iron, iron hydroxide, FeOH3, oh, no, we're just looking at the cation, my bad, Fe3 plus, plus water, goes to, now we do it, Fe OH3 plus, mm, let's balance it. Uh, so if we balance, um, is that a 3? E, no. Yes, it is a 3. Three hydrogens here. Okay. Now it's balanced. But what is the case here? This is a weak base. So we are not going to dissociate this, just like we did for LiOH. So now what do we have in the solution? We have H plus that is not counterbalanced by any OH minus that's been liberated. This is a basic solution. It will lead... What's wrong with me? This will lead to an acidic solution. The cation actually cannot... Um, lead to a basic solution, right? Because it's cation, it's going to liberate H plus for sure, and then whether it's strong or weak result, it will either not liberate or liberate OH minus. So those are your two options when you're just looking at the cation. <clears throat> now, I did give us NH3 plus as a, not NH3 plus, um, NH3, as a possible base, okay, but 
what we want to do is we want to look at the, the cation. So what if we had NH3, NH4 plus, oh, my bad. Where can we get that, actually? We could get it from, you know, just the salt, NH4, Cl. That is NH4 plus Cl minus. We take the cation part of it, and we react with water, and we predict some reactants, or products, NH4OH. Um, plus H plus. Again, we have H plus in the solution. This is also a weak base. Okay, weak base. And hence, that also will give an acidic solution because we don't have OH minus liberated to cancel out the H plus. <clears throat> Do you want to update our examples of weak bases? So we can have a hydroxide, right? that looks like this. And that's a weak base. And because of the weak base, in this situation, we do not counteract the H+, and the solution becomes acidic. Those are the effects of cations. Let's take a look at the effect of anions. <clears throat> All right, the effect of an anion. If we have, for instance, uh, let's do B1 again. If our anion, B1, let's do C1. Uh, if our anion is a counter ion for a strong acid. Okay. What will happen? All right. What's our strong acid? HCl, HBr, HI. So if our counter if our anion was Cl minus, that is the counter ion for a strong acid, and I do the same analysis, react with water and see what happens. We get HCl plus OH minus. So you notice now that we do have OH- minus in the solution at this point, but because this is a strong acid, you saw what we did for the strong base, we dissociate, and we get Cl- minus plus H+. Plus. What do you notice here? They neutralize each other. So this is just the same thing as B1, cation of a strong base, these are neutral solutions because of this situation. We have anions of strong acids, and this is a neutral solution. C2. Anion is uh, the counter ion of a weak acid. I think most of, most of us are thinking a weak acid as HF. Okay, that's a good example. So the HF, <clears throat> uh, oh not HF, but uh, KF, uh, potassium fluoride will release F minus, and when we when we react it with water. We get HF plus, no, oh yeah, yeah, HF plus OH minus. Now, instead of a strong acid, we have a weak acid, and it will not dissociate. And if it doesn't dissociate, look what we have. We have OH, we have OH minus without any counterbalance. Now we have a basic solution. Okay. Now, what's the trick here? B. We're going to do examples. So, let's do our the following 
acidic salts, basic salts, or neutral salts. Uh, we'll try together KF. Okay, that was in the title. Copper 1 nitrate. Okay, that's a good idea. Copper 1 nitrate. And um, hmm, what else do I want? Oh, how about this one? Uh, NaClO4. Okay. Okay. KF. Look at. Look at the shortcuts that we can do, the KF. Um, can you tell, or maybe not? Let's do. Let's write out the reactions. KF goes gives me K plus. That reacts with water to give me KOH plus H plus. But this KOH is a strong base, so we get K plus plus OH minus. Therefore, the K results in a neutral solution. But I also have the F. So F minus plus H2O goes to, well, HF will be made plus OH minus, and this is weak. Weak um, acid. And up here was a strong base. So this is just be very careful. Because of this weak acid, the OH is right, it's not neutralized. And therefore, this is now basic. Okay. So now we're gonna say that K is the cat is the cation that results in a neutral solution. F is the anion that would make the solution basic. You're looking for the net effect. So the net effect... See, K is doing nothing. When we mix this with water, and the water is neutral to begin with, K is doing nothing. But F is making it basic. So your net effect is you have a basic solution. Okay. Basic solution. Now some of you may realize, oh, I could have instead of doing the you know final analysis, neutral and basic, I could have just said strong base, the K plus is from a strong base, or is a derivative of a strong base, the F minus is a derivative of the weak acid, strong base, weak acid, base wins, basic solution. I'm only going to say that once because that does work but it's not really a great way to think about it. You should be thinking about how it either neutralizes or not the H plus or the OH minus. Let's do copper nitrate. <clears throat> copper 1 nitrate. Can we do the same type of analysis? Cu, NO3. Let's take care of the copper first. Um, so copper plus plus H2O gives me copper hydroxide plus H plus <clears throat> because this is a weak base. Do not dissociate. Do not ionize. H plus is left in the solution. This is acidic. Okay. With practice, this will become very fast. <clears throat> what about the NO3 minus? Plus H2O. Hmm. HNO3 plus OH minus. But that is a strong acid. Therefore, it will dissociate into NO3 minus plus H plus and yep these neutralize each other so that NO3 minus results in no change to the water 
but the copper leads it to be acidic. So your analysis is acidic. NO3 has no effect on the water, and the net effect is acidic. One more. You can go ahead and pause the video if you want to test yourself. What about NaClO4, sodium perchlorate? Can you do a similar analysis like we did for the last two examples? Okay. I always start with a cation, H2O. Um, that will give me Na. So it's positive, so it's more likely to hook up with an OH minus. That liberates H plus. That is a strong base. And that strong base obviously will dissociate into Na plus, OH minus, and we neutralize. This is neutral. What about the ClO4? minus. <clears throat> we add that to water and that looks familiar. We have perchloric acid plus OH minus. Oh, this is our first example where we have a strong base, strong acid. And we are assuming that both of those dissociate nearly 100%. And therefore, we have full Neutralization. Neutral, neutral. Well, if both uh, charged species, the cation and the anion, result in still a neutral solution, your net effect for this salt is our first one, neutral. Okay. Now, which combination have I not shown? I am not showing um, this combination. If we have M and, uh, I don't know, X, I'm not showing you the combination where this is um, acidic and this is basic. That's a little more complicated because it depends how basic this metal makes the solution and ha sorry how acidic and how basic this anion uh, makes the solution I'm not telling you how to do this okay for my class um, you will not be expected to know how to do a problem like this a problem like this would be something like um, uh, NH NH4F right that will give an acidic solution and that will give a uh, basic solution. I'm just double checking. Yep, basic solution. So what we would need to know, but I'm not going to do this example, you need to know the strength of each of these. Need to know the Kb of uh, F minus and the Ka of NH4 plus. And whoever's bigger, that would be the bigger effect. But I'll leave it at that. That would not be a problem on any of my exams this semester.